are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're looking for more funding for your deals, regardless of what your mortgage company, hard money lender, banker, any of those people would say, you're in the right place. I'm getting ready to plug you into the funding. And also, I'm going to tell you how you can learn about how to find deeply discounted properties before other real estate investors even know they exist. Well, welcome to the show, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, coming to you from Moorhead City, North Carolina. And oh my lands, have I got a very special guest that I'm going to introduce to you in just a moment. But before I bring her on, I want to remind everybody it's right around the corner. I mean, I'm talking just days away. My upcoming live event, Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference is right around the corner. I'm going to go ahead and give you the website so you can go check it out uh, when we finish the show. It's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. I don't know another live event like this. I'm actually going to be having uh, private lenders, about a dozen of my private lenders there at the event for you to network with. The first day we go on the rehab bus tour looking at our own houses and I teach you how we uh, found the houses. I give you all the numbers. You'll meet uh, uh, part of my team, my contractors, uh, my uh, acquisitionist, uh, our interior de uh, designer that's been with us for 14 years. And on and on, you can learn how to model this business, real estate investing. And it's without using any of your own money or any of your own credit. The second day, I'll be teaching you my foreclosure system and how I sell any house in three days or less. And then on the third day, it's all about automation. We have an amazing a VIP reception, a reception on the end of the second day. So get on over to the website that I just gave out, jayconner.com. And I'm with an ER for those of y'all that are listening, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. I'll be there all three days. And in fact, my special guest that's here on the show is going to be at the event as well. So I want to get her introduced and bring her on. My special guest today is Monica Sawyer. And Monica is known as the Blissful Millionaire. Now, she's been investing for nearly three decades, and she doesn't look old enough to be investing for three decades. But nonetheless, she's been through every cycle that we've had in the market, the ups and downs. But still, she has turned $10,000 to over $2 million, working between five and 10 hours per month with very, very little stress. Monica loves, loves teaching others. She's got her own podcast show with a huge following, but she loves teaching others how to build, uh, how to build uh, wealth and, and to create the life of their dreams. She's helped parents pay for college educations and weddings. She's helped countless of people retire with the lifestyle that they have dreamed of. What's more, Monica has helped so many people become millionaires. They've all done this the way Monica does it, and that's Monica's blissful way. She's the host of a top-rated podcast show called Real Estate Investing for Women, and she has been, uh, she's been, and by the way, you're going to be hearing her blissful laugh here in just a second, but Monica has been featured on international stages and podcasts and radio and TV stations, including ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, and The CW. So, Monica, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. And how are you doing today? I am doing amazing. Thank you for having me, Jay. This is so exciting. <laughs> Absolutely. And it took exactly five seconds to hear the blissful laugh. <laughs> Already, it sneaks out. in there, you know? <laughs> but yes, y'all, Monica and I, uh, I don't know, we met, what, Monica, maybe time flies, six months ago, eight months ago, nine months Something ago. Something like that, yeah. And uh, in fact, you had me um, as a guest on your show, which we just had, had an amazing time. But uh, I'm so excited that you're going to be also at, the, uh, at my upcoming live event uh, in person. Uh, for people to get to network with you. So um, why don't you take a, a moment or two and give your backstory. I mean, what did life, I mean, I was going to say, what does life, what did life look like before real estate investing? But you've been investing for, every, you know, three decades yourself. I mean, have you, was there ever a point in your life when you, Real estate was not a part of your life? <laughs> Actually, no. 
<laughs> so, so did uh, how did you get into real estate at the very beginning? Yeah. So actually, my story starts in India in 1967 um, when my parents met and had an arranged marriage and came to the United States as immigrants with a dream, a dream to create a better life for themselves and the children and the family they were going to create. Um, Daddy had heard that the, the golden ticket to wealth in the United States was to buy real estate. So as fast as they could, they bought their first home um, that I was born. Yay! <laughs> and after I was born, you know, they were so filled with like hope and joy and this desire to give me this amazing life. So they saved their nickels and dimes Mom took all of her Indian fabrics and like made curtains for the house and pillows for her sofa. She could have a be- so she could have a beautiful home, but still save enough to buy their very first rental property. So they did that when I was three years old. So that's when my story started with real estate when I was three. <laughs> I love it. So, you, so you grew up with having parents that were real estate investors. That's now right. you're known, as I said in the introduction, you're known as the blissful millionaire so let's stop right there tell everybody tell me what exactly do you mean what is bliss okay so um bliss is this deep sense of joy and contentment and the confidence that you can handle anything that comes your way So it's really all about emotional resilience and emotional mastery. So when I talk about bliss and blissful real estate, I'm talking about having control of your emotions so that you can make good investing decisions. Did you know Warren Buffett has been known to say that if you can't control your emotions, you can't control your money? Interesting. And and that's really what blissful investing is. It's Managing those emotions so that your business, you make really good decisions, but also when things go wrong, because they always go wrong in life and in real estate and in everything, no matter what you're doing, you're able to get back to that place of bliss and joy so that you can look at the problem through rose-colored glasses and solve it that way. Because I'm telling you, every solution that comes out from that point of view is going to be a solution that will move you forward to success. Yeah. So I know you can't dive deep in a 30 minute show when I ask this question, but can you give my audience at least a 30,000 foot view, big picture of how do you do what you just said that is? In other words, (laughs) how how do you control your emotions to where, I mean, I know we can, and I know it can be done because the apostle Paul in the Bible says that in the, I think it's First Thessalonians chapter 5 and maybe verse 12 or so, he says that we are to rejoice always, and that's, and then along with that, in the midst of, in the midst of everything that's happening to us, we still have the choice and we can rejoice, but from your, I mean, I know you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of followers, what do you teach your audience as to how to accomplish that? Okay, really good question. So I'll give you um, a couple of quick ideas on how to do this. First of all, I wrote a book called Choose Bliss, which is tells you all about how I do this. There's actually like 12 of my like bet most used techniques that I've taught my my clients and the ones that I use, and they're proven successful. So that's one way, choose bliss. Um, the other thing is, you know, just realize that we were given our emotions as a gift from God, just like our minds, our hearts, our emotions. We're all given those resources by God to help us to experience life fully and experience success. So I do not think that emotions are a bad thing. We have a full range of emotions and we should experience all of them because every single emotion tells us something new, right? Something's wrong. Something's not working. This really is working. Do more of that, right? There's all of those. But what you don't want to do is make life decisions or investing decisions when you're in the throes of emotion. So experience your emotions, honor them, learn from them, 
And then you want to come back to a place of bliss. And I have a really quick technique I'd like to share with your audience. Are you okay with that? Absolutely. Go for it. <clears throat> okay. So it's called moving into a bliss moment. <laughs> 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 and what we do is when you're in a place of stress, so let's say, for instance, you're in rush hour traffic and someone cuts you off and you start to have this reaction, right? What you do is you interrupt the reaction. So you just, for me, I'll literally say, Monica, stop. So you want to just stop the thought because all the stress happens in the story that you created about situations. Mm -hmm. The situation is just a situation. So you stop the story in your head. Take a couple of really deep breaths, fall into your heart. And now from this place of calm, you can make different decisions. In the rush hour traffic thing, you're not going to start driving crazy. You're not going to start cussing and get yourself upset so that by the time you get to where you're going, you're upset. You're just going to relax. Okay, so someone's having a bad day. Whatever. It has nothing to do with you right? And you can do that in real estate too. You get a phone call from one of your tenants or somebody that's saying this is wrong or that is wrong. Instead of having a reaction, step into a bliss moment and make your decisions from there. Yeah. You made a really, really, I love it. I love what you just said. You just made a really, really important point that triggered a, um, a quote that I heard uh, T. Harv Ecker say. Now, I don't know if he originated it or not, but what you just described, T. Harv Ecker said, nothing has meaning except the meaning that you give it. Yes. So, for example, uh, what you were saying is like, you know, what may drive Monica crazy may not have any effect on me whatsoever. And it's, it's the same circumstance, right? That's right. You know, but... You, uh, you know, you had one response. I had another response. You, you, and you also just talked about the word reaction, which I love. And, um, and Monica, I don't know if you and I have talked about this in the past, but, you know, I think about reactions and I think about responses. Yes. So when the doctor says you're, you're, you've had a reaction to the medication, that's not good. That's not a good thing. <laughs> but when he says you are responding to the medication, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So when you said, you know, stop, I love you what you just said, stop, Monica, stop, you know, just stop. Which reminds you that the you inside of the you or the I inside of the I actually can be in control as to what, as to how we're responding. So that's I love, right. I love what you just said. Um, so now you alluded to it for a, a moment, but Tell us one more time or expand on the idea as to what does this choosing bliss have to do with real estate investing? Okay. Let me give you an example. I could give you a, mi a million examples, but let me give you one that just happened. Um, I got a phone call. I was leaving for New York. I was talked to NASDAQ this week, super stressed out um, because I was preparing for this speech. This is probably one of the most important speeches I've given so far. It was so amazing. Um, but I was leaving, I was heading to the airport and I got a phone call from one of my tenants. And she says, Monica, I've got a leak in the roof. Now, what could I have done in that situation? I'm really out, I don't know what to do. Ah! You know, like I'm getting on a plane, right? And that can be a freak out moment, right? And instead I called her back and I said, I'm, you know, tell me a little bit about it. And so she told me she was crying, she was upset. Um, and I said, listen, you got this. Why don't you call somebody on Yelp and just get it handled? Pay whatever it takes. Take care of it. I'll pay the bill. And then you don't have to wait on my schedule. And she was like, really? And I said, yeah, just do it. It's all yours. You can make it happen so that you're happy. And she uh -huh. was like, so excited, so delighted. And I got to go to New York without any stress. Like, what a different situation than if I had freaked out and said, I don't know what to do, I'm traveling. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. That's so wonderful. there's one example. Yeah, that's wonderful. So why is this so important as to what you're talking about in, in this framework? You know, um, so many people get into real estate because they want to make the money. And it is the best way to make money in the United States, I have to say. Right? Yep. 
what they don't realize is that it can cause a lot of stress, just like anything else, just like having a job, you know, just like anything else, it can cause a lot of stress. And if you build a business in a way that's going to cause you stress, it's not sustainable. Or let's say too much stress, right? So instead of stress, why not build a business that actually builds joy? Like not just that I get to get rich and that's joyful, but what if the journey was joyful? How much more could you do? How much more could you accomplish? How much longer could you stay in the business, right? I think that if we are able to bring bliss into our businesses, into our real estate business, we can create money faster in a more exciting way. And we are more creative. You know, I have a particular strategy that I love, but things come up, right? Every once in a while, so I'm a buy and hold person. Every once in a while, a wholesale thing will come up. Every once in a while, I'll do a fix and flip. I just moved, I just started a construction company. I'm now the CEO of a multi-million dollar business, right? Oh, yay! That's awesome. That's awesome. how, How does all that happen? It's because I'm not afraid because my whole business is built on this idea of being blissful. And if it doesn't support the bliss in my life, I don't do it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, uh, what you were just sharing reminded me of a conversation I had years ago. This would have been, I don't know, maybe 15, 16, 17 years ago. Um, I, uh, have a, I have a really good friend. We were in business together. And at the time, he had all the toys. I mean, he had the boats, the yacht, you know, the fancy cars, um, you know, the really, really nice house, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we were on the way to lunch one day and he says, Jay, I'm missing something in my life and I don't know what it is. He says, I've got all this stuff and I still feel empty. Mm -hmm. Well, that led to a, a very deep spiritual conversation because as you said just a moment ago, Monica, I mean, it's not the money. It's what the money allows us to do, Mm -hmm. right? But having a bunch of money or a bunch of stuff and material things, that's not going to bring you the bliss, is it, Monique? It's not. I always say the stuff can support our bliss. Like it can accentuate it, right? But it's not going to give it to you. The bliss has to start from inside you. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Now, you mentioned a moment ago that uh, you're primarily buy and hold, but tell us what does your real estate investing business look like? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, words, what, what's, what's, what's your world looking like? Yeah. Um, so I only own right now about six properties. Um, I just sold two. Um, and so I own executive homes. And there's a big debate in the market, and I hear this all the time. Some people want lots of doors, right, so that they've got a lot of cash flow. I like very few doors that never have vacancies. Now, tell and, our audience what you mean by doors. Okay, just... <laughs> Not a lot of doors. <laughs> there are 13 in my house. No. <laughs> doors is how many front doors do you own, right? right. So how many properties do you own? How many investment properties do you have? Okay, so go ahead. That's right. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, so, so, you know, there's this debate. Do you want to have an apartment building with 19 doors and you want to have 10 of those or do you want to just have a few doors? I like to focus on very, very nice properties that will attract the kind of tenants that I want to be doing business with. I consider my tenants, my business partners, they're the key to my bliss. You know, they don't call me and scream at me. They call me and say, can I give you a Christmas gift? I love that. Right. <laughs> right. Right. When I, but, you know, on the negative side, when I have a vacancy, you know, a huge percentage of my properties are empty. Right. So that's the debate. However, I've created a streamlined system on how to get really, really good tenants. I don't really have vacancies. I think in the last five years, I've had three weeks of vacancy. Wow. So, but the properties are very, very nice. My rents are very, very high. I'm dealing with the quality of business partners that I want to be dealing with. That's how I do my business. Now, it does get a little bit boring because I get phone calls. I don't have management problems. I don't have mortgage problems. I don't have any problems. So it gets kind of boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> Therefore, you're flying across the country to speak on the NASDAQ thing. 
That's you right. Your time, I right? got it. Yeah. I started a podcast. I created all this busy work. But, <laughs> but, but the other thing is, I found a piece of property that was underutilized. And I decided to do a construction project on it. So now I'm building a multi-use building. So, you know, every once in a while, I'll do something to kind of spice things up a little bit for myself. But yeah. my, my major business is just buy and hold. And like I said, I don't have that many. Yeah, yeah. So um, as a, well, okay, so how long ago did you get your uh, most recent property, would you say, did you, that you acquired? Um. I would say about five years ago. And there's a reason okay. for that. Okay. Um, normally I like to buy a property every year. Yeah. Um, the construction project, construction loans are really tough for people that had, don't have a lot of experience. Right. I wanted to make sure that I could get the construction loan before I bought any other places because I use the banks as a rule. I'm changing that because I'm working with you now um, right. to make some new exciting things happen. But um, in the past, I've always let the bank take 80% of my risk. Um, mm -hmm. And with the construction, I wanted to make sure it was a bank taking, my, taking the risk, not me. And right. so I needed to wait until that construction loan got approved before I could move on to any other projects. So I've been kind of waiting on the sidelines. I got you. I got you. So have you got, Monica, any kind of uh, morning routine that sets the day for you? Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you, you, you mind sharing it? I don't. It's fully in my book, too. This is one of my key strategies to bliss. Yeah. Um, so my morning routine, I actually wake up about eight o'clock and I turn on the I turn, push the snooze button. Everybody tells you don't push the snooze button, but I do because I love to. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I cuddle with my little dog and I say my gratitudes for the morning. And I don't say gratitude, it's just, oh, God, thank you for this and thank you for that. But I, and it may just be how warm my bed is or how sweet my dog is or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is, right? And I get out of bed. I um, feed the dog. My husband's getting dressed. I feed the dog. He takes the dog down to, to do his business while I make coffee for us. Right. We sit together for about a half hour and have coffee and connect in the morning. Then he leaves for his train. I get dressed. Um, I come upstairs and I look at some really nice affirmations or what I call a mind movie, which helps to uplift my day. And then I get started. I usually get started about 10 o'clock. That's interesting. Um, it's very interesting that you that you really focus and spend time on gratitude first thing in the morning. I came across a, a, a recent study. Oh, this was in the past month. And uh, I don't remember who did the study. But anyway, it's proven that people that focus in the morning first thing on being grateful uh, and also in the evening, but, but specifically in the morning, that it actually, you, you attract more things into your life to be grateful for and mm -hmm. to be happy by acknowledging all, you know, these things that you are grateful for. So I guess it's sort of like what you put out is what you're going to get back, right? That's absolutely true. I call it the master key of bliss. attitude. Because the other thing is not just that what you put out is you get back, which is in fact true. But it's also what you focus on. The very first thing that I, we were talking about is those rose-colored rose glasses. You know, when I'm looking outside right now and it's stormy outside here in, in Northern California, there are a lot of people that are like, oh, the rain, I'm going to get an accident. People don't know how to drive, right? They see that. And I see, oh, my goodness, our reservoirs are going to be full this summer. Yeah. Right? So what is it that you're focusing on? And when you, when you have this attitude of gratitude or this focus on gratitude, you just naturally are in the habit of looking at things in a better way. Yeah. So when did you, I mean, how many years ago did you really come to realize that this is the way that you were looking at your world through these glasses? Probably about 15 years ago. Okay. So um, I'm going to put you on the spot. So, but you just have to speak from the heart here. Um, so since you really 15 years ago, so really started focusing on choosing bliss and being grateful. Um, can you think of a 
very challenging time. Now this can be career, it can be real estate investing, it can be a personal relationship, it can be financial, it can be health, any area of your life that this thing showed up unexpectedly and how did you respond? How did you deal with it in this framework of choosing bliss? Yeah, I got a great story. Um, so is it okay if I talk about 2008 and how sure. everybody, like, right? We had this huge I can, economic I can relate to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Since it's a real estate show, we'll do that. Um, so in 2008, in um, September of 2008, I spent a million dollars on my dream home. I bought at the top of the market. Mm. This place was like heaven. Like seriously, my life had like every prayer had just been answered as far as this home. Within three months, the property lost $300,000. Wow. Within six months, it had lost 50% of its value. Wow. And all the other properties, I owned 10 other properties. They all lost a huge amount of value too. Mm -hmm. You can imagine I was pretty freaked out. Right. Right. Then my husband had to get a new job. Mm. And we had to move. Mm. So what do you do in this situation? We had a huge pay cut. We couldn't afford this mortgage anymore. We, the value of the property was so low. What did most people do in that situation? They basically sell the property, cut their losses, take the credit hit, and go on with their lives. Many of them moved out of California, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, yeah. what I did was I decided that I didn't decide. I, <laughs> I kept my head, right? I fell into this sort of bliss spot. And I looked at the situation. What were my options? And what I did was I rented out my dream home, which was heartbreaking, right? But I rented it out. Mm -hmm. I was able to cover the mortgage. Wow. We, yeah. Well, the thing is that so many people had lost their homes that you had all these very highly paid people that needed rentals. Right. That makes right? sense. Yeah. So we were able to cover the mortgage. David and I, he had taken a huge pay cut. We bought a little dump in our new area that we could live in. So we made a compromise yeah. there. I fixed, so it was livable. And then we kind of went on with our lives. So now fast forward, nine years, the market's recovered. The place that we were living in had gone up $500,000. We got to move back to my dream home. Nice. That, that had recovered and gone up another $500,000. Nice. Because of that crash, all in all, with all my properties, I was uh, above by $3 million. Wow. Wow. Right? All just because I took, the, I took the approach of how can I make this blissful for me? You know, that's a powerful question. And, and I've talked on the show in the past about the power of asking questions. Uh, how can I make this blissful? I had a guest on my show, I don't know, a few months ago. Um, and uh, no, it wasn't. I take that back. It was not a guest. I came across a, um, a short little YouTube video and I forget who the um, I forget who the person was that was teaching this technique. And it's a cousin to what you're saying. How can this be blissful? Um, and you're going to love this, Monica. You're going to love this. <laughs> he said his technique was when that when that challenge comes up or, you know, it can be small, it can be spontaneous, or it can be that big thing of having to move out of your house. He goes through this exercise and he, he asks himself repeatedly, what's great about this? Mm -hmm. What is great about this? And then just actually going through the exercise of not typing it on the laptop, but actually the pen and the pad and writing out what's great about this. And, you know, I have, and I'm going to start using your question as well. I love your question. How can I make this blissful? Um, because, you know, when, again, when we're, when, we're, when we're focusing on what can be good about something or what we can be grateful for, then that's where our whole emotions are going to go. And you mentioned at the beginning of the show, I, did you use the phrase emotional resilience? Did I did. That? Yes, yeah. I did. And so I do know as a fact, 
that one characteristic of successful entrepreneurs that make it, it's not because they don't have the same challenges and setbacks that other people would, but it's how do they deal with those setbacks? How do they get back up on the horse and how do they stay resilient? So how would you define emotional resilience? What does that really mean? Like I was saying, we have a huge range of emotion, right? All the way from, let's say, suicidal, super depressed, right? All the way to absolute ecstasy. When you're in either one of those situations, you're very distracted from sort of the business of, of living life, right? <laughs> and so in either case, you want to come back to what I call the blissful equilibrium. Now, that bliss equilibrium is that Home, that's home. That's where you get to live. That's that place of joy and contentment, right? Um, and emotional mastery. But when you go to either places and people want to stay in ecstasy longer, that's cool. Stay there. But when you go to this place of anger, sad, re sadness, resentment, depression, rage, whatever it is that you go to, emotional resilience is, be is being able to quickly bring yourself back to that bliss equilibrium. Yeah. And so in your book, Choose Bliss, uh, are, the, are the specific techniques in the book? Yes, they are. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I can't wait any longer and we're almost out of time for the show anyway, but I know uh, my audience wants to know how can they get the book? Where are they get it? <laughs> it's on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> So it's got an electronic version, so you can get it on Kindle. You can get the paperback, so you can get that on Amazon. And um, if people want to find out more about how to become an actual blissful investor, and they want to see how I do it, um, I'd like to offer your community a free gift, if that's okay. Absolutely. My audience and community loves free gifts of great quality, which you have, I know. <laughs> awesome. So they just need to go to Blissful Investor. Dot com, And I have put together a report, my story, my case study of exactly how I went from the $10,000 to the multiple millions of dollars with all the gory details of the ups and downs. I bought at the top in 2001. I bought at the top in 2008. But still, you know, timing, timing hasn't always served me but I've still managed to do really, really well. And so it can be an inspirational story. It can also be a series of strategies that people can implement. But in any case, I believe it'll benefit people to help them to create blissful wealth in their own lives. That's awesome. So, um, so say the website one more time to where they can go and then spell it out if you will. Okay, it's blissfulinvestor.com. So it's spelled B as in boy, L-I-S-S. -S. Those are S's like Sam for bliss. So blissful, F-U-L, investor, I-N-V-E-S-T-O-R.com. That is awesome. Thank you so much for offering the, um, the free gift, the uh, report there. And also, I mean, you know, everybody needs to just get on over to Amazon and get your book. You yes, know? absolutely. <laughs> yes. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, you're coming to my upcoming live event, Real Estate Investing Cashflow Conference. So folks, if you want to network with and visit with one-on-one -on -one and get to know Monica even better, there's another, yet another reason to get uh, registered and, and come on out for the event. So again, that's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast and that will get you registered just a few short days away folks so be sure and get on over to the website monica parting words and thoughts everybody remember bliss is your birthright choose to claim your bliss every single day I love it, Monica. Thank you so much for being on the show with me, Monica. We've had a blast and we've had a blissful half hour, <laughs> at, least from my, at least from my perspective. So thank you all for uh, tuning in. If you're watching uh, on any of the YouTube channels, be sure and uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on any more of the uh, content we have here on the shows. And uh, comment below. I love comments. If you got any questions, put your uh, questions in the comments below the uh, 
they're on the screen. And, um, and, and if you're listening on iTunes or Google Play, be sure and subscribe and rate and review. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best in your real estate investing career. And I also hope you give me the opportunity to help take your real estate investing career to the next level. Bye for now.